this video, I'm going to work through a combined concept example that involves momentum impulse relationship um, and kind of talk through everything. So everything that we learned up through module seven and um, up through Newton's second law applied to with conservation of energy to vertical circles. Um, all of those lists of our problem solving concepts um, are just going to get um, added to as we move through this course. So now we've added on the impulse momentum relationship. So here's a typical problem. Um, we have, say, uh, mass M that has a force F of T applied to it. Let's say that the speed is equal to zero at T equals zero, so it starts from rest. And then there's a variable force that varies with time that's applied to it for two seconds. And then after that two seconds, the force stops acting. So at that point, um, then this force acts for two seconds from t equals zero to t equals two seconds. And then after that force stops acting, then the mass is going to travel up along a frictionless path and then up a hill that does have friction on it. So up a ramp with friction. And the question is, what is the maximum height that the box gets to? And so that's going to then be put your answer in terms of variables given in the problem. So A, um, from the force expression, um, the, the mass, if it turns out that we need that, the mass of the block, the angle of the ramp, the coefficient of kinetic friction on the ramp as well. All right, so let's go ahead and, uh, oh, and of course G. So let's go ahead and work through this problem. So first, with these combined concept problems, I want to decide how many parts are there to this, right? And then analyze each part. So being very methodical, like you are all developing a skill um, to do. So in this first part here, we have a force as a function of time that acts for two seconds. So that's gonna be one part of our motion. And so that first portion, it's a force that varies with time. So I'm going to use the impulse momentum relationship. So I'm gonna use the impulse momentum and you can start um, referring to that by the equation or by the term impulse momentum um, relationship. Um, in that case, given that variable force, if I integrate it um, with respect to time, I get impulse and that equals the change in momentum. So that's going to give me to get the speed at t equals two seconds. So that's gonna be the first part of my problem. And then the second part will be when it then is headed up the hill and gets to its maximum height. So I then need a plan for the second part of my problem. And that second part of the problem, now you absolutely could do this with Newton's second law combined with 1D motion, but hopefully you've seen that conservation of energy is in much more straightforward way to just get directly to the answer in a single step. So in this case, I'm going to use conservation of energy to get what we want, which is the maximum height that it goes. All right, so let's go ahead and work through this. The impulse momentum relationship in this case, is simply that the impulse is the integral f dt. And I chose this because I saw that I had a function, right? So first of all, do you have anything? Do you have a function in your problem? If you have a function in your problem, then you're probably gonna use calculus. And if it's a function, you wanna ask yourself, well, what's, what's it of? Is it force, is it acceleration, is it velocity? And does it vary with time or position? In this case, it's force varying with time so I'm gonna take the integral of force with respect to time, that is impulse, and then that's gonna give me my change momentum. So mv final minus mv initial. All right, so mv initial is just zero since it started at rest. And so I would then have here my integral of the function I had, which was at to the three halves, so A is some constant and then T to the three halves DT. And that's gonna be a value um, integrated from zero to two because T equals two seconds. And so just like any polynomial, if it's T to the three halves, it's okay. It would still just go up to T to the five halves. So I'm gonna have A T to the five halves and then basically divided by 
five halves, which is basically the same as multiplying by two fifths. So um, that's my integral and I'm gonna evaluate that from zero to two. So then I can put this in and say that my end result um, is simply going to be two times a times two to the five halves all over five. And you can get a decimal from that if you prefer or you can just leave it um, like this. Now, what you might wanna do is you can simplify um, two to the five halves, right? So that's two to the fifth and then the square root um, of that. So you can basically pull out the square root of two and you end up um, you know, in that portion just ending up with four, right? So four times the square root of two, you can simplify it that way. Or I'm just gonna leave it as it is for now. All right, so that's going to be, um, in my case, my impulse. And then I'm gonna set that equal to my mass times my V going up into that hill. Um, so I'm going to call that M V final one because that's what'll be my um, headed up into the hill is equal to two and then times A times two to the five halves all over five. So my speed going up into the rough hill um, is going to be my impulse divided by my mass. All right, so I save that as my key result from the first part. And so now I know the speed going into my second part of my problem. So going up into this hill. And I've identified this portion as a conservation of energy problem. Again, one of the hallmarks of a conservation of energy problem is very often that it does not involve time. And that's the second part of this, does not involve time. After two seconds, we have no cares about time. And there is a change in height. So there's change in height and a change in gravitational potential energy. So I'm gonna use conservation of energy for that portion. So it heads in with some kinetic energy so now I'm gonna do section two, and I'm gonna do conservation of energy. My initial energy is kinetic energy. My gravitational energy is zero. I haven't, um, don't have any springs. So that's my only initial energy. My final energy is then going to be however much, again, no springs. So however much gravitational potential energy I've gained plus however much internal energy I had added to the system by passing over that friction patch. I don't have any springs. And because I'm looking for the maximum height, then K final is zero because it's gonna to come to rest at that maximum height. That's how far it'll go before it stops. All right, so now let's go ahead and put in some values for these. So K initial um, will be one half M V final one, that's this V final from here, um, quantity squared. Um, and that's why I left the two to the five halves because I'm gonna end up squaring these all anyway. Um, and then equals UG final. So that's gonna be M G and then that H max that I'm trying to find, right? That's how I'm gonna be my gravitational plus my delta U internal. And so then that's gonna be mu sub k times the normal force on a ramp. So the normal force on a ramp, this part involves knowing a little bit about your Newton's laws, um, that the normal force on the ramp, again, would be equal to mg cosine theta, right? And then times the length that it goes along that ramp. So the total length along the ramp. And that's what we're gonna call L for now. Now L is not allowed in my answer and L is gonna depend on H max. So what I need to do then is actually just look at this triangle and write L in terms of H max. So hopefully we can see from this triangle that we have we have the fact that sine of theta is equal to h max 
over L. So that lets us know that L then would equal H max divided by sine theta. So now I'm going to plug all of these in to my original conservation of energy equation and I get one half M and now I'm going to plug in for V final one up here. So 2A to the 2 fifths, so 2A, 2 to the, sorry, to the 5 halves, um, all over 5M, and that's going to be squared. And then that's then going to equal MGH max, which is what we're trying to solve for, plus mu sub K MG cosine theta H max over L. So I'm going to put this all then over L. Um, oops, sorry, times L. I don't know why I did that. H max over sine theta. That was my um, mistake there. So I meant to say um, L is equal to H max sine theta. So H max divided by sine theta. Okay, so now I basically have my answer because here I'm trying to solve for H max, um, but I have to do a little bit of algebra. So let me go ahead and do that. So I'm going to just simplify some things. So one half M um, and then this whole quantity here is squared. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and put an M on the bottom. So one over two M, because this is M and M squared. And then I'm gonna see what this looks like. So I'll just square each term for a squared times two to the fifth all over 25. So that's kind of messy. Um, and that's then going to equal, um, and now I'm gonna pull all the terms out that don't have H max in them. So that's gonna be equal to MG um, time, uh, you know, plus mu sub K MG and then cosine divided by sine. Um, I can call that cotangent of theta. I might as well. I was also gonna call it one over tangent of theta. It's whatever you prefer. Um, you can leave it as cosine over sine um, if you prefer as well, times H max. And again, H max is what we're ultimately trying to solve for. Um, so I'm pretty much there. I can now write out my answer for H max. I'll do a little bit more simplifying um, here where uh, two to the fifth, I believe, is going to be um, equal to 120, you know, I got ahead of myself, four to the fifth, so that would be 32, two to the fifth um, would be 32 times four, that's the 128, so 128, um, but then divided by two, um, so 64, so 64, a squared over 25M, and then I'm going to divide um, out this term as well, times one over um, MG plus mu sub K MG cotangent theta. And I'm gonna box that, and that is the maximum height that my block will go up that ramp um, in terms of these variables that are provided. Okay, so let me know if you have any questions. You can see again that these combined concept problems, you just break them into parts and you work through it. Your answer might be messy and no big deal. All right, let me know if you have any questions.